Caddis larva patterns, and especially case caddis larval patterns, are perhaps one of the most underrated and underutilized pattern designs. Trout don't share this bias, particularly during the winter and early spring months when few aquatic insects are active, case caddis larvae are often present. Tied in the Hans Van Klinken style, here are the materials you will need to tie your own selection of peeping caddis. So let's tie the peeping caddis and there are a number of options available to you on how you tie these. You could tie them by putting a tungsten or brass bead on here, perhaps augment that weight with some lead wire under wrap behind it. Jig hooks are popular. The goal is, is to try and get this fly to ride upside down or point up. And I'm going to show you a style that was first popularized by Hans van Klinken, the originator of the clink hammer pattern. And probably most of you know an excellent uh, dry emerger pattern. What I've done here is I've got some monofilament and I've crimped a split shot on here, a double A or a BB size. Crimped it on there, uh, about the midsection. This is, uh, I believe, a 10 pound mono. So we're just going to get our hook shank covered with tying thread. Wrap that on. Olive in this case. The tying thread isn't really that important because you really don't see it. I'm going to take that right up to just back from the hook eye. And then we're going to take our split shot and I'm going to grab the tag ends so the split or the slit in the shot is horizontal and it's almost like in gag-like fashion that the mono is coming in. You can see how that's held in place. Just a couple of wraps. I'm going to pull it tight as I can and suck that right on top and that's going to lock that split shot in place. It's going to be tougher to come undone because the the mono that's securing it is wrapped well down the hook shank. So we'll just get that in place and then we're going to come in with our heavy duty Dr. Slicks here and just give them that a trim get those out of the way. And then you can add a little further reinforcement if you like. A couple of wraps of thread. Come back out of the way. And you can take some UV clear fly finish in the flow formula. Give that a light coating all around it and come in with our light and cure it. And there you go, it's added reinforcement. So now let's tie the balance of the fly. So we're going to add a little bit more weight. You'd like to fish these case caddis. We're imitating a case caddis that's living along the bottom, maybe gets swept off by the, by the currents or by you wading by and gets it into the drift and the, the trout see these case caddis and uh, eat them case and all. So for the weight, you can use regular round lead wire. I'm just going to use some of this flat wire in the medium that I get from Fly Tying Specialties. Lots of great stuff for nymphing, particularly Euro nymphing. So I'm just going to take a length of this flat wire and I'm just going to hold that up on the shank, kind of come underneath, hold it in place and just put close touching turns. And how much weight you put on, you can tie these flies just with a split shot, one layer of lead wire, two layers, whatever you want. And you can get little grain scales and you can weigh the flies so you know all the different configurations and then you just simply match the right weight configuration um, for the conditions you're facing. Obviously if you're fishing faster flows or deeper runs, you may want a more heavily weighted fly. So we've got a little bit of extra weight in there just go over that a couple of times. So now we're going to tie in the body material, the peeping part that imitates that head section sticking out of the case of the, the caddis lava rather sticking out of its case looking for uh, uh, to get down to the bottom again. So we're going to use some, this is a chartreuse um, uh, colored vernil or plush chenille. You could use antron yarn, you could furl it, you could use glow bug yarn, some of the braided synthetics out there. So when using a material like vernil um, that can unravel uh, even some of your yarns, it's always a good idea to singe the ends a little bit, just like that. And you can see that kind of darkens the head a little bit and helps suggest the, um, 
the head of the natural caddis larva. And you can also come in if you want and take a black marker and further augment that darkened spot. But we're alright with this stuff right now. So now we're going to stick this melted end so it sticks out not too far. Caddis doesn't stick his head out all that much. So just about uh, maybe the length of the hook gap sticking out the back. And we're going to secure that in place and then trim off our excess. So there's that little head of the caddis peeping out, hence the caddis, sorry, hence the pattern's name, peeping caddis. Now to suggest the legs, we're going to use a partridge feather or a soft hand hackle would work. We want to make sure those legs, those fibers don't stick out too far. So one of the tricks is, rather than tie in your, your um, hackle fiber right here, I'm actually going to advance my tying thread up to a point where those fibers are going to stick back roughly even and I'll just get my big beat up hands out of the way here. You can see how those tips at about this point are going to stick out just about even with the tip of the, the uh, body there. So we're just going to tie that in place right there secure that down, trim away the excess Get our thread forward. I'm going to put a half turn in the hackle. We've got the convex or most prominently side facing forward, so I take a half turn to make sure it's positioned properly. Grab it by the tip. Oops, pull too hard. So I just reposition and attach. Happens all the time. Make sure you're using firm wraps whenever you're tying. Builds in durability. Get a little too much. I just want the tip section of this feather. There we go. I'm just going to go around once, maybe twice. Bring our tying thread back up, sort of zigzag it through. Trap that tip down. Come in and trim off the excess fibers from the tip area. Get right there, and we're just going to take our hands and kind of make sure that this break the grain on those fibers so they don't stick together so it's all sticking out like this. And now I'm just going to come with my thumb and forefinger, make like a triangle here with my thumb, my middle finger, and my forefinger, sweep those fibers back, and just wind backwards. You can see how they envelop around, and these are going to help suggest those little legs beating like mad trying to get back in. Just like that. So you can see by winding them forward they just are about even, not maybe a little bit long, but you don't want them. If I tied that feather in because of its length way back up at the base here, those fibers would be sticking out the back here. And Now we tie the body and the body is basically an atom and it's almost like this bright spot here, this contrasting light color is the trigger the trout is looking for to say that all this Flotsam that's drifting down in the flow is not a stick. This stick actually is a case caddis and it's uh, lunch. So for the body, I'm just going to form a dubbing noodle and I'm going to use some of this uh, UV2 caddis nymph dubbing in hair's ear. You could use squirrel, natural hair's ear, uh, dark caddis. You could palmer saddle hackles up if you want. But really remember it's an adamant. You just want to make a scruffy body. So that's what we're going to do with this uh, UV2 caddis nymph hair's ear dubbing. It works great. So we're going to form a dubbing loop. I'm going to pull down about four inches or so of tying thread, bring the bobbin back up, and wind that loop of thread I have now formed back right up against the base of that tail and leg assembly right there, and then come forward right up behind the split shot. I'm going to take my dubbing tool, this dubbing hook, place that in there, and then take and pinch some of this dubbing and I'm just going to pinch it out and you can uh, just sort of break it up a little bit in case it got uh, all clumped up together in the packaging process, break it apart a bit and then I'm just going to insert that dubbing into the dubbing loop just a little off camera and then slide it up into position and we're looking to create a scruffy buggy looking dubbing noodle. This is to represent the case and once again 
The case arguably is inanimate. It's not something the fish is looking for. It's looking for that contrasting little head sticking out that says this is a case caddis that's come off the bottom and is trying to get back down to the bottom before it gets munched. So these are great uh, off-season patterns too. In the winter months, if you can uh, nymph in your waters in the winter or early spring when the bottom is kind of barren and there's not a lot of other insect life active, these case caddis are always crawling around the bottom and foraging and often get themselves uh, into trouble, swept off the rocks, things like that where they're pretty well at the mercy of the currents until they can get back down to the bottom again. So I've just twisted this up. I'm coming in with my um, fingers to pluck this out a little bit and roughen it. And then I'm just going to wind this forward, starting right at the back where the body is. You can try and build up a little taper if you want to suggest a case of a cat, a caddis's case. That the, in rivers they make them out of sticks and pebbles and uh, bits of gravel, usually heavy things to help, the case helps keep them down near the bottom. I've even seen some tires that'll take hot glue guns and things like that and glue actual aquarium gravel and sand onto the shank to make ultra realistic looking bodies. I don't think that that's necessarily uh, it's fun if you want to do it but it's not a requirement for success. So we've got a scruffy looking body there and now all we got to do is put a little super glue on our tying thread here and build up a head. Just pull the split shot back if you have to to expose that eye. Come in with your quick finish tool, four or five turns. That in combination with the super glue. Make sure that's good and firm. You can come in with a dubbing needle or a brush and pick all this out. Sometimes some tires like to rib these. You can make wire dubbing brushes. But again, this case is kind of inanimate, so you can trim it down if you want a little bit if it's a little too wiry, but I don't think it matters. The scruffier the better. And that is your Klinken style Hans Van Klinken peeping caddis. And this fly is designed to ride upside down. So the benefit of this style, or tying on a more modern jig hook style if you will, is your fly riding upside down like this is going to remain relatively snag free and it's actually going to touch the bottom uh, on the split shot and bounce along those rocks and, and uh, hopefully cause you less fly mortality due to snags and things like that. So the peeping caddis, an underrated pattern but one you should consider having in your nymphing box for all seasons, 10s, 12s, 14s, 16s. Match the local caddis in your neighborhood. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you'll find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing shop. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. In addition, you can also follow me through my social media channels, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and please take the time to watch my other tying videos as well.